What's up everybody? We are here to review the movies that we watched last month. Last month being January 2024. Fresh out of the shower, a little bit of a cold, yeah. but at least with the matching shirt to the background. <laughs> so we're ready to roll. Um, we'll go from five up to one, back and forth, and also discuss the other movies that we watched that didn't make our top five favorites. You ready? Yeah. All right. My number five. Don't be looking at me <laughs> trying to sneak and know what's coming. Uh, favorite movie that we watched last month was Killers of the Flower Moon. Are you surprised it's that low? Or surprised it's that high. Are you surprised it made the list? So, yeah. so you didn't like it as much as I did. I thought it was awesome. Um, not the best Scorsese, but I really liked the score, the use of the drums. Kind of had this foreboding sense throughout the entire movie, like something was about to happen, and it kept happening. And it was unique in that it was like a mystery in which there was no mystery in who did it. So I think it's really awesome. Fifth favorite movie that we watched last month. My fifth favorite was The Godfather. That low, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Really surprising. Amazing acting, amazing score, amazing plot, amazing cinematography, amazing lighting. Just, it's a masterpiece. But it's still just my number five. A masterpiece that's only number five. <laughs> All right. right. We'll see what's yeah. coming. My fourth favorite movie, Poor Things. Emma Stone was awesome. Uh, Jorgos Lanthimos just has a unique vision where he's like a Wes Anderson or a Coen Brothers where you know you're watching one of his movies, very artistic. But really what put it over for me was Mark Ruffalo's character, <laughs> his acting. He's so yeah. awesome in this movie. It's worth watching just for him. I think he did an amazing job. Yeah. Obviously Emma Stone did as well. That was expected with her in the lead. I did not expect Mark Ruffalo, and it cracked me up, and he was great. Yeah. Uh, my fourth favorite was uh, Shawshank Redemption. Wow. Chapter four, Godfather. four and five, Shawshank and Godfather. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I think it conveys emotion really well. Um, great acting. It's well made. Good plot too, even though it's simple. I I think it's a masterpiece too, and I think I prefer it over Godfather. My third favorite movie, funny enough, Shawshank Redemption. Huh. Yeah, so um I think it's overrated because it's rated number one on IMDB and you know, it's heralded as one of the greatest movies of all time, and it is. I just don't think it's the greatest movie yeah. of all time, but it does hold up. It is so well made, like you said. It tells a simple story very effectively with a range of emotions. Beautiful story, and so one of the all-time great movies, but only third on my list of favorite movies. My third favorite is The Great Chain Robbery. Oh. The original one. From like 1904 or something like that. Like, yeah. Wow. And because it, it uses a lot of editing techniques or uh, cinematography techniques that, you know, now. It didn't exist use, at yeah, the time. Cross -cut basically. Yeah. And um, it's, and they have a whole story in 12 minutes. It pioneered cinematography techniques. Wow. Like, so you were really impressed by it. That's so cool. The Great Train Robbery. It's my third favorite. What would you think about that final shot? Yeah. I mean, I knew about it, but it's, yeah. Where's the, oh, there we go. Why can I not line up? My second favorite movie that we watched last month, inverse of yours, my second is The Godfather. So right above Shawshank, another past number one IMDb. And if I was considering movies for the greatest of all time, it would be included. And while I wouldn't include Shawshank in the argument for The Greatest Godfather, in my opinion, strong argument for the greatest movie. Um, although some might say part two is even better than part one. But it's just such a classic for me. I've seen it so many times. The lighting, so many iconic lines and characters. And uh, I enjoyed watching it. I was with you as well. So my second favorite movie for the month, Godfather. Um, <laughs> my second favorite was Poor Things. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, well-directed, um, amazing acting, good cast. It's very artistic and unique and has an amazing set. I just, I really liked, like, the uniqueness. The set, like you mentioned. Yeah. It's almost like a Dr. Seuss world. It's, yeah. And it's very artistic, and I actually prefer it over Shashi Redemption and Godfather. Wow. And it's a, you know, a new movie. I think it's going to win Best Picture. And really, you think that's going to be the Best Picture winner for this year? Well, I wish it will. But and you think Oppenheimer? Maybe, mm, it could win it, but... yeah. Um, between Oppenheimer, <clears throat> Poor Things, Barbie, uh, Flower Moon, like as four f front runners, those are very different movies. And we've seen a lot of other great movies. And coming soon will be our tier list ranking of the best picture nominees 
for this year. So be on the lookout for that. All right. Well, before we get to our favorite movie for the month, let's go through some other movies we saw. There's a whole lot more that you saw than me. So I'm going to go through mine. And then if you want to say something about them as well, go ahead and then we'll get to yours. But we also watched Maestro, which almost made the top five for me because I think it's going to be like a cult classic. I think it's it's very campy in ways and there's some things that are almost laughable, but I think good and unique and fun in a certain way to where I think it's going to be a cult classic. What are your thoughts on it? I thought it had that story, but it was it had amazing acting and a good score. Cause you know it's, but I, I think it had a bad story, and I feel like they should have focused on other parts of his life instead of the stuff they focus on there. Gotcha. Uh, also, the favorite, which again almost made my top five, it was in the top five for a long time because between those three women, each incredible acting roles, unique roles, the movie carried by those three. Um, again, another Emma Stone movie, but really awesome movie. What are your thoughts on the favorite? Yeah, I thought it was had amazing acting, great plot, well made, but a little too long. I think they, they could have cut some. It wasn't a long movie, but I think for the plot, it was a little too long. Mm -hmm. But I, I still think it was a really good movie, though. The Holdovers, which was one, is that one of the best picture nominees for this year? Yeah, and it's very good. It's got a. It it looks like the time in which it takes place, um, the cinematography. Um, less modern and, and more retro in that regard, which I really liked. Yeah, I thought it had a great story, emotional, good acting. I, it was one of my favorites, too, of Best, or of, uh, best Picture nominees, yeah. Dark Shadows, which surprised me because I didn't see it when it came out. And it looked corny, like how the Mon the Monsters movie, I'm like, uh, it's just there's no way they can capture the tone. And then seeing Johnny Depp's face like in the previews, I'm like, this is going to be bad. But... It actually had a purpose for his face to be that way because it told us a certain thing later. And I really liked it. And again, this, you know, Tim Burton, someone that creates his own world. And it, you really felt it with Dark Shadows. And I was surprised by how much I liked it. Yeah, I enjoyed it too. You know, I thought it was well made again. I thought it had a great cast of people. It was good acting. We also watched the ABCs of Book Banning, which is a short film nominated for uh, the Academy Best uh, Short Film. Really liked it. Uh, the topic is very important. Um, and I thought that was a unique way to address it by having the children. I just think it could have, I honestly, it could have been longer. I would have sat through more yeah. hearing stories and I think a, a bigger variety in the type of books and how it affects the kids. I, I think it should be turned into a full length documentary. I would sit through a full length version of that. So if that ends up being something that leads into more, that would be great because when it was over, I'm like, oh, that's it. I got wanted more. We also watched Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, which um, was better than I thought it was going to be. It wasn't amazing or anything. Mm, it was good. It was good. It, the atmosphere was similar to the original Indiana Jones, I thought. And, you know, I, I felt not the same, but it felt like it was, like, similar to that. And they took inspiration from the original one and not the past, like, three. Yeah, it was respectful of the original. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we also watched Child's Play. The original Child's Play is still fun and, you know, it's a, a unique, uh, slasher. He's definitely part of the canon of like great, uh, horror movie icons. What'd you think? I thought it was a little corny. Yeah. But it was, even though it was a little dull, it still had like good thrill. Mm -hmm. And even like the little kid was, I thought had some good acting. Points. Right. And I liked the plot of you know, a little doll. <laughs> yeah. That scared, you know, it scared me when I was a little kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know. And the last movie that I watched was Annabelle. I mean, the silence pretty much speaks <laughs> volumes here. It wasn't great. Yeah. Um, I did not like the ending. Remember the ending? Where uh, that one lady jumped off instead of the mom jumping off? Oh! Oh, thank you for... Uh, yes, 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 yes. So, Made, I guys. started loving it whenever I'm like, oh my God, this lady is like attacking her baby and the, the baby's in danger and did she kill her baby? And then wait, no, she can sacrifice herself. And then they took away the whole powerful moment of her. Okay. Thank you for reminding me about that. So what else did you watch? Um, I watched A Chip to the Moon, the uh, George Melies. I thought it was very imaginative. So you preferred The Great Train Robbery over A Trip to the Moon? Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Both movies are part of the 1001 movies to see before you die. I watched Free Solo, a documentary, 
I thought it had some really gripping moments, and it whenever he was like the plot's about a guy size scaling a mountain, what he does is called solo, and him doing that, it's just it's it's crazy. Like it, it's a sense of awe. The Big Lebowski. Um, I thought it was very funny, great plot, great acting. Hoop Dreams, which I watched on Film Studies. It's a uh, documentary. It's very long compared for a documentary. I think it's like almost three hours long. But it's very interesting. The Last Repair Shop, which is a short documentary. Um, it's far too short, I think. Like how you were saying with ABC's book painting. Harry and the Hendersons. Very funny, great acting, fun. Which I thought it was going to be corny, and it was. But I enjoyed the corniness for that movie. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it being corny. Yeah. Um, the Mario movie. I thought it had great vo voice acting by Jack Black, which is Bowser. And the person that played Luigi, I don't remember his name. But I think some choices, I'm not going to say who, for voice acting, I did not like at all, personally. Chris Pratt? Maybe. <laughs> um, Eternal Memory, which is a documentary. Very emotional. Um, well, what was the topic of the documentary? Uh, some dude with schizophrenia. And like his wife, like they just were like fleeting moments. And Man. Joker, I thought it was well-made. It's a perfect acting from Joaquin Phoenix, but I do think it's overrated, and I think I didn't like it as much because I was expecting more mm -hmm. from other people. I thought you would like it better, yeah. I, I thought it was really overrated. Gran Turismo, which is not what I expected. I expected it to just be like a racing movie, but it's a gamer that does race, but it's about a gamer that actually ends up like going to like a, like a like an actual like real life race car. It's entertaining. Killers of the Flower Moon, which she said. Uh, good acting, but it's way too long and it's not like it's like a gripping masterpiece or like it's a not like it's a very entertaining thing. It just the plot repeats itself for like two hours and I just get bored with it. The birth of a nation it's a very racist movie, <laughs> but it had good battle scenes for because it's an old movie. It had like I enjoyed the like the fighting scenes between the two the the, the Civil War side. They were epic for the time. You yeah, know? and it had a great set, but it's just very very racist. Um, and Firestarter, it's uh, the new Firestarter, right? Yeah, like the remake. It it's horribly made, huh? And it's it's just a hollowed out movie, and I feel like they didn't put any amount of time in making the movie that they have no care in the world for making the movie it's the, one of the worst movies of all time I think they just put no amount of effort in making the movie so, so what's worse Firestarter a horribly made well intentioned movie or The Birth of a Nation a great Firestarter, Firestarter <laughs> oh it's worse yeah Firestarter yeah, yeah. is way worse yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's terrible well I don't even have to look at my phone to know what my favorite movie was because it's one of my all time favorite movies it's the movie that I have seen more than any other movie because it was about a five-year period where I literally watched it. I had it on every day. I can quote the entire movie, The Big Lebowski. I love the movie so much. I'm no, I don't need to even say anything because there's nothing unique about me. There's so many people that love it in the same way for the same reason. The characters, the music, the plot, Just it's a modern film noir that's hilarious. It's one of the all-time greats and uh, one of my... Mount Rushmore favorite movies. My number one, which is probably the thing that's funny, is 500 Days of Summer. I did not expect that at all. I totally, I was like trying to figure out what your movie was. Um, even though you know what the plot is going to be, you not you don't know what the plot is going to be because they, I don't I don't know if you remember, but like they switch between times basically mm -hmm. like over and over again, and I love that. And like it's it's a funny movie, it amazing acting. I thought good cast. I just, I really love that movie. I, wow, I, yeah, that's really cool really that you do. That it just resonated with you. Yeah. Huh, 500 Days of Summer. Yeah. Well, let us know what you think of our top fives and all the other movies that we watched and what movies that you watch that are awesome. We'd love to hear what you think about these movies. Yep. And like I said, soon we'll be coming with our tier list ranking for the Best Picture nominees for this year. Yep. All right. Bye.